Like, here's a good question. Why do we begin Musar study with the Midah of humility? Why is that? Oh, Gordon. And it's foundational, I think, if you're going to do the introspective work of all the other midot, you have to have some humility to be saying, okay, I'm not perfect. And, you know, I'm not so great after all. To be wanting to look inside. Otherwise, you're going to be too defensive about looking at things. Oh, gratitude. Yeah, I do enough gratitude. It's too much self-justification as you go through them. So I think you have to start there. Excellent. Yeah. Anyone else? You know, I love to ask this question. Okay, on a scale of one to ten, how do you rate yourself in terms of humility? <laughs> That's kind of a, a funny question. Oh, I'm a ten. <laughs> Hardly, right? Okay. Can someone remind us of the definition of humility that was developed in the chapter? Laura is making a move. I mean, isn't it um, <laughs> about the amount of just the space that you take? I mean, giving others um, kind of the room to be themselves, but also taking, you know, the place, you know, it's like saying, okay, but I deserve to be here too. Yes, right. Rightful space, yeah. Nancy, I, you, did you take yourself off mute? Uh, I did. I, I, I don't exactly know how to go explain this, but to me, so I'm often the first one to speak, and I was trying really hard to at least be third or whatever. But I don't, it's, it's not like, oh, I'm so great, I'll just talk first. In my case, I think what I'm doing is like, well, I'll be helpful, you know, I'll, be, I'll get things rolling. Yeah. You know, or sometimes after I've been with somebody and I realize, gosh, I did more of the talking than they did. They asked me a bunch of questions. And I realized well, I grew up with the idea that I should be entertaining. That, that's, that was my value. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, let me entertain you. And, um, and that's, that doesn't come out of like, oh, I think I'm so great. It's almost like, no, I'm trying to be a value. So that's where I think it's a little tricky to just say, where am I on a scale of one to 10? I might look like, ugh, you know, you're, you're too out there, take up too much space. And that could be true. But when I try to think about it and how do I improve it, I notice it, it comes from various sources. Yeah, that's true. It's not real cut and dried, black and white. You know, it's, it's actually a lot, a lot of subtleties to it. Steve. I especially felt humility when Sandy was talking about the baby hippo. I, when I, I take the dogs for a walk on a coastal trail and when I go there and I look and see uh, all the creatures and the different plants and how it all fits together and what the environment is like, it's very hard to come out of that thinking that you're you know, this special creature that's unlike anything else. So I think it gives me humility. And also it's great to see baby hippos. I would love to see them. <laughs> But definitely, I think it, I think that to me that was the way to achieve um, humility was to think of myself in a much larger context. And the other thing was to listen. I think listen is a real important part of it. Yeah. Thank you, Rye. Yeah, I really like um, <clears throat> this opening definition: occupy a rightful space neither too much nor too little, focus neither on your own virtues nor the faults of others. And um, he goes on to talk about capacity for self-restraint and the space you occupy, which I think uh, he really drew this kind of finding a balance. It's not, it's like you can be on the arrogant <clears throat> end of the spectrum and you could be on the low self-esteem end of the spectrum and the story about the temple basically being mm. destroyed because of the rabbi's inability to 
um, have right action to really understand what was needed at the moment, um, uh, you know, and to kind of keep deflecting responsibility, uh, I thought was a really good example of um, how a, a lack of esteem can really get us in trouble. So I really like that it wasn't um, defined in a kind of monolithic way, but more yeah. about a balance and uh, dynamic interaction with what is happening. You know, what is the context? What is needed? Were you familiar with a story before? The Kamsa Bar Kamsa story? You're asking me or right? Oh, no, right now. Uh, which the, the, the story that they talk about with the rabbi doesn't make the decision. Well, I remember reading it in the last when we read this before. Okay. <clears throat> but <clears throat> no, why, why do you ask? I remembered a different version of it. Ah. And mm. so, anyway, it was a little bit different parable. Mm. And I guess this is the one we're going with now, so that's fine. I was it was a comso and a bar comso and comso was going to have a wedding and he was going to invite the entire shtetl except bar comso who he hated and bar you know it was a whole oh yeah yeah that's a, that's another story not yeah, the same I, guy uh I'm not sure if it's the same the same people it does yeah I'll have to look that up but that this is a different okay. story than that one okay yeah. right okay. Hey, uh, Jerry, I see you're not on mute. Were you going to share something? Um, you know, I um, pretty much the same thing that Raina and Nancy shared, except that in Marcus's book, he says something that made an impact on me. Hmm. Uh, humility defined as Musar is knowing you're right. Just exactly what was said before. But also um, not having too small a head. We should not be too self-important. And at the same time, we cannot sell ourselves short. Sometimes we have more talent, more money, or better looks than others. It is okay to acknowledge such, such things as long as we recognize that having the goods comes with the responsibility to use our powers for good. And that last two, three words really, really were important to me, you know, rather than just putting my input in because I'd hear myself talk, but to do it for the good of something or somebody mm -hmm. or the group. That's, yeah, that's really excellent. Mm -hmm. I was thinking uh, like, a, uh, for me, like a definition w would be something like uh, discerning what the situation demands, whatever situation you're in, discerning what, what it demands and what it requires of you and then doing or being what is required of you i don't know so yeah gordon you know, i think joseph campbell um made the comment something like that we are the hero of our own journey and i think if you add humility to that is we are the protagonist of our own journey that we're not that the you know it's what's going partly with dealing is what's inside going on inside our head as well as just what our behavior is interaction with others it's, it's kind of in your head, what's the right place? You know, uh, Steve commented, he likes taking the walk because he feels, you know, part of nature, you know, a, a larger world. But even in a relationship with others, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, looking at ourselves, um, that we're not the center of the universe, you know, the, this concept, the center of the universe. We're not our own hero, mm -hmm. we're just a subject. Mm -hmm. And it, to try and have more um, balance here on uh, perspective of ourselves, yeah. not to go to stream of being, you know, a superhero, but not being Eeyore either, you know, and being the group. Right. Great insights. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Reading part of the book, they talk about a woman who was dressed in very colorful colors, sat in front of the room, then thought about it, and then came back the next day in her beige and sat in the back of the room. And I like color. I mean, I like it because it makes me feel good. And that whole thing bothered me. I don't know about anybody else, but just 
I don't know. I just disagree with that. But wasn't the point I it to, was to make it, it, it absolutely a metaphor and to yeah. distinguish between your choices of whether you want to be yeah. have more, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just sort of read that and I went, you know, I wear color. I can wear any place I want, and you don't have to. I wouldn't put beige on. But anyway, this is me. Yeah. yeah. But you wear colors and sit in the first row. That was the point, you know, taking it all to um, to lack of humility and then going in the opposite and going to a lot of, of humility yeah. where find the balance and go in between. Mm -hmm. I see. I think the point, Sandy, I think the point wasn't that she was wear, wearing bright colors. She realized she wasn't wear, wearing bright colors because she liked bright colors or she found them cheerful. She was wearing them in order to bring attention to right. herself at right. conferences yeah. so that she would stand out of the crowd. Right. And so she as an experiment said, well, what would happen if I didn't try to stand out of the crowd? You know, I mean, who knows? Maybe she went on to decide that she actually liked bright colors anyhow. Maybe she went on to decide that she actually liked earth tones more anyways, but I think it's really more that it was what her mo motive, going back to what Reb Moshe said, it was really what her motivation was. That mm -hmm. she was doing it to try to bring attention to herself. And she, therefore, she realized she was trying to take up more space and, than maybe was optimal. Yeah, I think that. Okay, that makes that sense. I just, I don't know, I read it. Right. What? But I think <laughs> if, you, if you extrapolate further with that, it's. Um, you know, you think about Americans' love of the charismatic leader um, and how, you know, the leader metaphorically has to always be in very bright clothes. Mm -hmm. And there's a desire, um, you know, to look up to people. There's like a collective mass desire to look up to people who can draw attention to themselves. And it's something that's very uncomfortable, um, I think, for us as we view leaders, because, you know, I think of some of the people that I've been um, most moved by as leaders, they have been very humble, you know, really like true servant leaders. And um, it's just not easy when it's such a popularity, politics is such a popularity. Mm. So true.